Welcome back to the series of Ancient Dungeon VR Guides. In this episode, we will be discussing the fourth floor of the dungeon, which is the Luminous Mines. The Luminous Mines feature a wide assortment of enemies that include some familiar faces with new twists. And with that, let's get into the video. A special consideration for the Luminous Mines include the minecarts. Minecarts can be struck with the melee weapon and will be launched in the direction that you strike. If the rolling minecart hits an enemy, it will deal around 50 damage and will typically eliminate anything it hits in a single strike. However, the minecart can shatter when used in this way, so use them carefully. With that, let's move on to the enemies. The stone slime is a tough slime that upon landing shoots spikes toward the player. The spikes will only generate in the direction that the slime is facing, so avoiding direct eye contact is typically a pretty good counter. Standing diagonal to the face of the slime and striking it up or horizontal is the preferred way to deal damage. Striking downward on the slime can either lock it on the ground leading to an easy kill or result in a very fast, unreactable wall of spikes damaging you. The mines have another slime and its counterpart is the bone slime. The bone slime is a fast slime compared to its stone counterpart. Striking this slime can be done simply to keep space and in many cases preferred. Bone slimes are more susceptible to knockback, meaning they can be thrown into the generous amount of pits in the mines more easily. When a bone slime is slain, it will shoot a triangular pattern of death damage projectiles that are very fast. These projectiles are unable to be blocked and in many cases are unavoidable. While difficult, dealing the finishing blow with a ranged weapon is the easiest way to avoid taking the death damage. Skeletons are a standard enemy that run at the player and attack them by jumping in the air and slamming down. This jump can be interrupted by a melee attack which will cause them to fall and have to recover on the ground. While they do have a vulnerable period here, they can recover quickly. Use this as an opportunity to create distance and deal damage with the projectile weapon. The skeleton can also deal damage through contact, so it's best not to run into it. Its variant, the minor skeleton, is differentiated by its mining helmet. The minor skeleton functions almost exactly as its standard counterpart except for the fact that upon being alerted, it will throw its pickaxe at you. This pickaxe can be reflected back to the skeleton for major damage and makes the minor skeleton start at a significant health disadvantage. As a fun fact, if another enemy runs in the way of the pickaxe after being reflected, it will deal that damage to that creature instead. In large groups, both variants of skeleton should be approached one at a time, if possible, by newer players. Both variants of skeleton are also very fast and difficult to run from. The Possessed Skull is a peculiar enemy that launches itself at the player in an attempt to deal damage. At this stage in the game, it's very likely that one melee attack is enough to slay the Possessed Skull. However, the skull is resilient to range damage from a throwing knife, so don't expect to defeat it quickly that way. Possessed Skulls also typically spawn in groups. If you see one, expect more. Wave Elementals are one of the most frustrating enemies in the game. While I would love to give a fix-all solution to dealing with them, it doesn't really exist. Similar to Disc Elementals in the floor before, they are vulnerable to melee attacks and will typically be felled in one blow. However, their projectile pattern is usually impossible to bypass without taking damage, meaning you must attack them from a distance. Having patience and being willing to chip away at it with ranged damage is the safest way to deal with it. Use cover to your advantage and wait for it to lose aggro before striking again. Stem snipers, also referred to as ceiling plants by many, or by me as preta plants, are stationary plants that sit on the ceiling and shoot a fast projectile at the player. Stem snipers are very frail and can be defeated typically in one shot. Their projectile is very fast and is sometimes hard to reflect. Their distance from the player ranges anywhere from melee range to out of sight. Most are within an easy range projectile attack, but some longer distance placements lend themselves to defense from your own weapons. Sometimes these plants are hard to detect due to their dark coloring and a small amount of natural camouflage. However, the plants make an additional noise outside of the alert noise that can be heard when they prepare to attack. This enemy, along with the wave elemental, actually made me want to suggest increasing your volume to prevent ranged ambushes and helping you identify when an enemy has stopped attacking. That brings us to our final standard enemy, the rotating bee. I will keep this explanation brief. 
This is a focusing crystal that shoots in three directions at random and spins. Don't walk into the laser. Hit the crystal. Profit. This brings us to the boss of the level, the Elder Skeleton. The Elder Skeleton attacks by shooting a wave of projectiles or by shooting a trail of spikes in an X pattern from its body. The spikes are fast and are typically the way the skeleton will actually deal damage. The standard projectile attack is very easy to avoid. The biggest threat of the Elder Skeleton is its movement. The skeleton teleports and when it reaches its target destination, it typically shoots the spikes here. Incorrectly identifying where the skeleton ends up or where the spikes will appear can result in you not seeing the spikes and taking easy damage. As always, you can play it safe, stay near the center of the room, and attack using only your ranged weapon. This gives you the most time to react to the spikes at any given moment. If you have health to spare, you can always rush with both of your weapons and attempt to chew through its 160 health as fast as possible. And with that, you're ready for the final step. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please don't be afraid to like and subscribe. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything, and it always makes my day. With that being said, I hope you have a wonderful day.